All right. Good morning, bonjour, bonjour, and shall I say, goeiedag, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, thank you for, oh, goodness, sorry. First of all, thank you for having me today and, and for hosting this great event. Uh, I'm Caroline Pinar, the exploration manager for First Mining Gold and the resident South African, if you wondered where the surname and name's from. Um, today I'll be talking a bit about our company, where we, op oh my goodness, where we operate and how we go about exploring for value um, within our two flagship projects in Ontario and in Quebec. This is a forward-looking statement. I believe you guys have heard enough of this and understand what it's all about. I'll just move on. Uh, first of all, I would just like to pause for a moment and talk about how we as First Mining Gold would like to uh, acknowledge and respect the land uh, and the communities in which we operate. Springpole, Cameron, Duperke are all projects surrounded by communities uh, which we um, actively engage with. First Mining Gold is a Canadian mineral exploration and development company and we're headquartered in Vancouver. The company was founded in 2015 by Keith Newmeyer uh, from First Majestic, who is one of our major shareholders. Um, our shareholder structure is further made up by 80% of retail investors and 15% institutional investors. Today, First Mining Gold is the sole owner of two of Canada's largest gold projects. Um, we also have the Cameron project within our portfolio, De joint ventures with Oteca and Big Ridge, and we are a major shareholder in Treasury Metals. First Mining Gold has a market cap of just over $100 million. Uh, we've got $10 million cash on hand, uh, $9 million marketable securities, and no debt. I just mentioned that First Mining Gold has two of the largest undeveloped gold projects in Canada. And highlighted here in red, uh, you can see how Duperke Gold Project and the Springpole Project ranks amongst the top 16 projects within Canada. If you look at this slide, and you see where those in construction um, little titles are, it is clear to see that all of these major projects are going into construction phases. And we believe that these two projects on front in our portfolio will significantly add value to Ontario, Quebec, and Canada. Further upside to both Springpole and Duparque is that both these projects are located in two prolific greenstone belts that boast opportunity for further discovery. We as First Mining Gold have core business values in how we operate. Today I will just talk a bit about the few critical success factors to our exploration programs. We deem social licensing, permitting, and timing as the three pillars uh, that are foundational to our success. We value and continue to work with our local communities through engagements, building awareness, capacity, and sharing knowledge, uh, whilst also exploring opportunities to employ, train, and build partnerships. As with many things in life, timing is everything. Um, our work programs are designed to focus on a medium to longer term exploration strategy and work on applying timelessly for permits so that we can adjust to you know, any changes that come our way. We also consider about seasonal activities, uh, social and seasonal considerations, for example, hunting and those sort of things. In order to maximize shareholder value and to be successful in what we set out to achieve, it is important to have a strong exploration strategy. Our strategy is focused on the overall business plan with the objectives of advancing district scale exploration as well as our development opportunities. This has been the focus uh, with the Birch Uchi since 2021 when First Mining Gold acquired a significant land tenure through direct acquisition or earn in agreements uh, around its Springpole flagship project. Uh, we again demonstrated this last year with the uh, full um, consolidation and acquisition of the Duparquet Gold project in Quebec. Um, 
Each of these projects, like I said, have a significant land package that we'll see in a little bit that also opens up exploration space. Um, First Mining is advancing the development studies on Springbowl and Duperke uh, with ongoing environmental baseline studies. And if you follow the news, we recently put up an updated uh, PA. And I'm sorry for my slides being late because of that. In order to achieve our success, we have to be systematic in how we go about in developing our exploration plans and then more importantly, executing on that plan. So, um, like I said, we have a meaningful gold portfolio and in the next few slides, I'll, I'll focus on the three in Ontario as well as briefly talk on Quebec. Starting off with Spring Bowl, um, which is roughly 400 kilometers north northwesterly direction from here. Um, this low sulfidation epithermal porphyry deposit hosts both gold and silver. There is a significant amount of strong angelic alteration which can be seen in the stop left photo. Um, this high tonnage, roughly 300,000 ounces per year, low grade deposit, currently has 3.8 million ounces in reserve, 4.6 million ounces of gold in the indicated category, both at just under a gram per ton. The pre-feasibility study was released in 2021, and we've been advancing environmental and development studies along with socializing the project. We have a draft EEA out for commenting and review currently, and I think there's like 1,800 in comments that they're working through currently. The 2022 development drilling further unlocked the Southwest Extension Zone, um, as you can see on the left of that picture, that returned representative grades at meaningful widths. Further data gap analysis over the past summer has reviewed highlight and highlighted a potential easterly extension, um, which came about you know, when the markets turned off in 2013 and those targets were never followed up. Um, so there is a lot of near bit uh, opportunities around this spring pool deposit. We are also working with a structural consultant to further unlock spring pool's potential because we believe that there are positive um, vectors indicating that this unique deposit doesn't occur in isolation, and we are hoping to find other spring poles in, the, in our area. Speaking of unique, uh, spring poles also has an association with tellurium in what is deemed economical concentrations, um, as well as some fluoride and lithium. We had the OGS out in August. Um, we're supporting a study with them and understanding the critical association of critical minerals and gold. Uh, lastly, Springpool is nestled, nestled in a 70,000 hectare tenure across the Birch Uchi, Greenstone Belt, or the Bugby, as we refer to it. And um, let's talk a bit more about the prospectivity in this area. If you put on your reading glasses and pick out Spring Pole Star on this very small map, you will see where it sits within the Birch Uchi properties. These properties are located in the underexplored Bugby, and the belt has proven gold endowment um, with past producing mines towards the north, um, which was Argosi, I think I'm saying that right, as well as Soldor. Um, we grabbed a mug sample last year from the Soldor mine, which returned 34.7 gram per ton gold. The Birch Uchi Greenstone Belt has favorable stratigraphy and excellent regional structures. And if you look closely, or maybe just believe me, um, you will see some of those regional deformation zones and splayoffs coming off um, from around the Trout Lake Batholith um, from the greens, uh, Red Lake Greenstone Belt. With such a large tenure and a small but strong exploration team, we have managed to advance regional exploration um, over the last almost two years by carrying out regional screening um, and infill data gaps, and I would say we're at 75% completion rate on the screening side. We have completed a large uh, airborne program at the end of last year um, where we uh, did a MAG and EM um, geophysical survey and then consulted with Mira, Geo Mira Geosciences to advance um, target um, and plate EM models. Over the last two summers, um, 
we have collected many, many soil samples and grab samples, um, thanks to our summer students supporting us out there. Um, and we spend this summer not just in filling those gap, but gaps, but also advancing follow-ups. We had a 724 part per billion um, golden soil anomaly. Um, and some of those grab samples highlighted in that little table that we followed up. Uh, we've also drill tested four targets across the region, um, and I'll have a bit more on those in my next slides. Our first drilling in the Bugby was at Swain, where we managed to drill test about a six and a half kilometer strike length. Um, against the Grace deformation zone. Um, that structure comes around and down towards, uh, past the soil anomaly and then towards the Soldor mine. So we believe that there is quite a significant endowment in that area and we're just trying to understand that a little bit better. Moving up in the belt um, this winter, we drilled the saddle target, um, which returned consistent uh, gold mineralization across um, meaningful widths once again. Our first hole returned um, just under a gram per ton at 114 meter interval, and we believe that this target has a lot of potential as it's, it looks to be open in all directions. Horseshoe was also one of our winter drill um, holes this well, targets, I want to say, this summer. Oh, my gosh, this winter. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we opened a 216-meter strike length that returned close to half a gram over uh, 48 to 50 meters. Atlantis was one of those EM targets that we drilled. Um, unfortunately, this one didn't retain, return any assays, uh, gold significant assays. Um, but th the area is perspective in terms of um, a gold endowment. There's, it's a definitely a recipe for success. We've had historical drill holes that returned 140 gram per ton at three meter intervals and 246 gram per tons at one meter intervals. Uh, we've got more on this on our website. Our exploration strategy is focused on systematic data um, digestion, integration, and advancement. Um, we have to go back to our fundamentals of our exploration strategy and value drivers and make sure that we uh, continuously advance and have a strong focus on the geosciences as well as mineral systems approach in order to achieve success. We have built a target catalog and pipeline and we are advancing these targets as we are already in year to up this value chain. Moving on to Cameron. Um, Cameron is also in Ontario. It has year round access and excellent infrastructure. We have a 50,000 hectare consolidated tenure around this project and half a million ounces in measured and indicated and almost half a million ounces in the inferred. Um, it's an advanced stage exploration project um, and it has. Um, the NI43101 resource on it with 54 exploration targets that we have ranked and cataloged um, as, oh my goodness, sorry, follow up, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, we also developed a 42 by 16 kilometer exploration um, leapfrog model. Uh, as you can see in red, we've got some of those targets that have been um, identified as value add to this project. Um, we developed a phase one 4,000 meter and a phase two 15,000 drill meter program for this project. Um, we're not currently advancing anything at this point. Moving over to Quebec, um, and I'll do this in English because my French has not yet developed very well. Uh, we consolidated the property further earlier this year by acquiring additional ground from I Am Gold. Uh, the resource was updated as well as at the end of last year, and last week we announced the positive PEA on the project. This project has the potential to produce 233,000 ounces of gold annually and has an 11-year life of mine. It boasts 3.6 million ounces in measured and indicated and over 2 million ounces in inferred at 1.6, 1.7 gram per ton gold. Um, this property is located along 19 kilometer strike length of the Desert Porcupine Fault Zone, which is known to be quite prolific um, and has um, numerous larger uh, producing assets along this trend. We just completed a 5,000 meter drill program and we are we're kicking off phase two currently. 
Some of the highlights that we returned, also we had a news release out last week, um, confirms one of our targets here in blue that you can see is the buzz target. And this target was generated um, on that property boundary between Duparque and the IM Gold tenure. So we believe it was under explored because of that property boundary and just shows the synergies in consolidating projects. Um, we got a 6.5 gram per ton over 4.6 meters and a 1.2 gram per ton over 10 meters um, and also validated historical mineralization uh, grades and the wireframes. The project has, me has been over many hands um, over the years and one of the first thing we discovered is that there is power in consolidating data and not just tenure and building these integrated models for advanced vectoring and targeting and understanding what your mineral system is doing. So in closing, um, Today I hope to share a bit more about First Mining Gold, our strategy, and how we are advancing on multiple fronts um, from development to exploration. We have various projects at different stages of maturity and in the pipeline um, that we follow, and hopefully over the next couple of years, we'll see them moving further along the value chain. Um, thank you, Mikwech, Mercy, and Bayadanki. <laughs>